All right, let me make some announcements, then we'll get started with our Bible study. A uh, couple of things. Let's see, Brotherhood's Sunday morning, 8 o'clock. We'll be eating at 8. Come on early, catch up on everything. And don't forget, Sunday or Saturday night, really, run your clock backwards one hour. It falls back in the fall and it springs forward in the spring. So we'll run it back one hour and uh, that'll get you on time. And then our fall festival will be Saturday week from 3 to 5. Better write that down, I'll forget it. Right here on the grounds. Amen. I was inviting somebody one day this week to come. I don't care who it was now. The children. They have children. Seems like I'm forgetting something. I ain't got everything written down. Oh, you know. Shoe boxes are due on the 15th, which is two weeks from today. My wife's going to break me, it looks like. Huh? Uh, you already broke me. Yes, sir. for now. Oh, I know. I believe I know who you're talking about now. He's got... Lives on the right. On the right. I've been there once or twice. All right, let's remember to pray for him. We've got envelopes now. We, this is not the final envelope, but this will do us till we get the final envelope. Uh, one like I like better. For our mission offering, if you want to give uh, specifically, specifically to missions, it's not been my day. Uh, then you need one of these. They're up here. I'm going to put some on the table back there if I don't forget it. And every penny of that goes direct to the missions in our mission account. And uh, we, we, if you want to participate, if you don't, hey, you're going to miss a blessing. Amen. Now, don't give your tithes to the church, to missions, okay? That's not biblical. The tithe goes to the church. The offering, you can do what you want to with as the Lord leads you. And I'm going to read you a verse. And uh, it said, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? Now look what God said. In tithes, that's T-I-T-H-E-S, and offerings. O-F-F-E-R-I-N-G-S. If you're just tithing, you're still robbing God. It took me years to come to that conclusion, study my Bible and all, and I'm not after your money. But I know God blesses obedient people. And all I want to do is teach you the truth and you can do what you want to with it. But uh, the offering is what I give to missions. My offerings. And I give my tithe to this church. So, I do, do, do. I never heard that before. Well, I'm sorry, it's in your Bible. And uh, that's the way it is. Genesis chapter number 19. Hmm? 
No, I didn't. I will, though, before I leave. This is the most loaded chapter we've studied yet. Uh, I've had a time with it. I mean, a good time, not a bad time, okay? But it is, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> but Genesis 19, last week we got down through the 11th verse. Tonight I hope I can finish this chapter and get through with it. But we saw where the two angels came and told Lot to get out, etc. And how the people surrounded Lot's house wanting the two men. <coughs> and how he offered his two daughters, younger daughters, to them in place of the two angels. Of course, uh, that didn't work. And then you're going to see where he, the angel... One of the angels or both of them reached out and got him and pulled him back in the house and closed the door. And they uh, struck those men that was outside surrounding the house with blindness. So they could not see where to get to the door to kick it in or get out. So we got that far last week. Now tonight, beginning in the 12th verse, you find the... Uh, Angels asking Lot the question, hast thou here any besides? He's talking about uh, kinfolks, okay? Son-in-law, sons, daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. He didn't even call it a city. The angel did. He said, bring them out of this place. And that's a pretty good deal. Now you're going to see Lot in the 14th Lord, 14th verse. Go to his kids, his son-in-laws, etc. And tell them to get out. The Lord's going to destroy it. And in the last phrase of that uh, verse, he says, but he seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-law. They didn't believe him. They didn't believe him. I want to give you a sermon. I'm going to just give you the highlights that I'll preach one day somewhere. The cost of backsliding. <laughs> the cost of backsliding. Here you see a man that the Bible says is righteous. Here you see a man that is saved, yet he made a mistake of, of letting his eyes lead him. When Abraham said to him, Lot, choose whichever way you want to go, I'll go the other way, because there was a little bit of friction between Abraham's servants and Lot's servants. And Lot looked up on the well and he saw the well watered plains. And the Bible said he cast his tent towards Sodom. That's a big mistake. When you let your eyes lead you, you're going to get in trouble. <coughs> big time. I'm speaking from experience. But he cast his eyes. Then later on, when these angels came, he was no longer in a, in, a, in a tent, but he had a house. He had moved into Sodom. And there he was. And he was sitting at the front gate of the city when the angels came up, indicating in Bible days, that's where all the business, all the city officials, they sat at that gate. And they made decisions discerning uh, pieces of land, who bought this, who can buy that, etc., etc., etc. So Lot had not only moved into town with his wife and his children, now, I don't know how long he had been there. The Bible does not say. 
But he stayed there long enough to, apparently some of his daughters had got married, probably to people out of the city, not Christian people at all. And when Lot went and told them, get out, they laughed. They mocked. He sounded like one mocking. Sad day when me or you or anybody else tried to tell our children something and they mock at us. Sad day. This is not a pretty lesson this evening. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry because it's in the Bible. But you can, as a Christian, you can get away from God and get away to the place you've seen it happen, I've seen it happen, until nobody believes you are a Christian. Not only that, it says over in one of the epistles, Peter or James, I forget, that it, it's, it's possible that you get so far away from God, you don't even know if your sins are forgiven or not. That's pretty bad. That's about as far as you can go. But backsliding, what does it cause? Lot lost everything he had ever worked for. Everything he, he held dear to him, his house, the furniture, uh, the f whatever. He lost every bit of it. That's like you going home tonight to your house and just finding a pile of ashes. Because that's all that was lot, the left of Lot's doings. But he lost everything he had worked for. His home, his land, his livestock. He was a rich man. But he lost it all. He lost his po political position which I think he, he liked, apparently. He lost his wife. You're going to see her turn into a pillar of salt. He lost all his children except the two daughters that were still at home. He lost all his children. But the most important thing he lost now, you said, well, preacher, what else could he lose? The most important thing he lost was his testimony. When you and I try to witness to somebody and tell them about the great love of God and they mock us, that's because they know something about us. That's because maybe we're not walking in the steps of Jesus like we should walk. Amen. I'm capable, you're capable. You don't have to look at me like that. We're all capable of doing that. And his first step was, ooh, that looks good. Ooh, that's inviting. That's well-watered plains. I'm a, ooh, that's a place for my cattle and my sheep. Ooh, man, yeah, big city too. He's like the prodigal son. <laughs> he always wanted to go. And he, he went. And I, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. But he lost it all. God had already rescued him one time. You remember back in the 14th chapter, I believe it is, when the kings came upon Sodom and Gomorrah, and carried Lot and his family off captured and all his belongings, his cattle and all that good stuff. And how Abraham, Uncle Abraham, <laughs> went and uh, rescued him and his family and all his goods, so to speak, and brought them back. And my question is, right then, Lot could have made a choice and not had to go through what he's going through in this chapter. He could have made a choice and said, I need to get out of this city. I need to, to go with Abraham and go another direction. 
But he didn't. He went right back into Sodom. The Bible talks about a dog going back to his vomit. That don't sound good and that isn't good, but I've seen it, you've seen it, an old dog will do that. But that's what he did. He went right back into the cesspool he got out of. How many times here in Stockton, Georgia and other places that I've told people this, and I'm going to tell you this tonight. Once you make a mistake and you get involved in something like Lot got involved in, and you go right back, you'll get in it again. You need to separate yourself from some people. Amen. You can't hang around a dog without getting fleas on you. It's going to happen. Well, my dog don't have fleas. Well, most dogs do. But God had already rescued him one time through Abraham. Now, Abraham didn't offer to go this time. He didn't tell the angels, let me go and I'll get Lot and his family out. You remember the chapter back there when Abraham was, I call it Jew and you call it what you want to. But how he said, if there be so many righteous people there, will you still draw? And he got him down to 10 and Lot had more than 10 in his family, counting his son-in-laws and all. And there wasn't 10 there. There wasn't before. Him and his wife and two daughters. That's all that got out. He went right back <laughs> to the cesspool, so to speak. God did not rescue Lot because of Lot. If you look at the 29th verse, you'll see something. Of that chapter. It says. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain. That God remembered Abraham. It was Uncle Abraham again. Although Abraham wasn't physically there. But it was Uncle Abraham again. And his godliness. And his walking with God. That rescued Lot again. I imagine there's people in this church, not, I'm not talking about here tonight, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but because of a praying mama, because of a praying daddy, because of a praying friend, whatever, you've survived so far. But I want to say something to us. I, I should do this on Sunday mornings. You, you can <laughs> go so far And you're going to be gone from here. There is a sin unto death. And God's patience does run out. Amen. Go back in Genesis again and read coming up to Noah. And you'll see how God got a plenty. And he said, I'm going to destroy it. Oh, God wouldn't destroy a Christian. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. We're, we're none of us starting here and going wherever you want to go. There's none of us that God has to have. Thank God he's let us be here. Thank God he uses us. But God can replace us with something much gooder. I promise you. So here he is again. Now you're going to see that Lot and his wife and two daughters did not want to leave Sodom even after the angels told them that we're going to destroy it. They didn't want to leave. Look with me if you would. In the 16th verse. I want to start with the 15th verse. But when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot saying, Arise, take thy wife, thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. 
They tell Lot, get your family, get out. He didn't do it. And next verse, 16 verse, while he lingered, you ever told a youngin to do something and you know they just, they don't get in no hurry? That's what Lot was doing. While he lingered, the men, the angels, got him, well, I'm putting it in my language, laid upon his hand. They got him by the hand. They got his wife by her hand. They got their two daughters by their hand and more or less drugged them out of there. My soul, my soul. Lot has stayed in Sodom so long till, boy, he loved that place. His wife loved it. His two daughters loved it. They liked that city life and the, <laughs> the bright lights, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. I say sin is, is enjoyable for a season or something like that. It's in the book of Hebrews. I don't know where it's at. You can stay in the cesspool long enough till you like it. Think you can't live with that? Now, I think that's where Lot was. I think that's where his family was. And the angels told him, said, now get out and drug him out of there and said, don't you turn around and look back. You go to the mountain or the mountains. And of course, Misery's Lot had to have one last look. And I'm not throwing rocks at her. Her children are there. Now you think about it, her children, and if they had any grandchildren, and I assume they did, all the grandchildren was there. You need to think about that, folks. And she turned to a pillar of salt. Everybody knows about that. They came out. They told them, or the angels told Lot, to go to the mountain. He said, uh-uh, oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I, I better not go to the mountains. I, I, I'll get killed up there. Something happened to me up there. He said, there's a little old town over here. He said, this little Zoar, or whatever you pronounce it. He said, let me go over there. He didn't want to go to the country. Amen. A lot of people won't live in Stockton. They got to be closer to Walmart. Or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> but he said, no, no, no. Well, he, the angel gave in and said, okay, that'll be fine. You go on over to Zoar. And I don't know how long he lived there. I don't think he lived there too long, to be honest. But the Bible said he, he went and went to the mountains. He went to the hills, so to speak, of the mountains. Him and his two daughters. He doesn't have a wife anymore. Now here's the ugly part of this whole chapter to me. It's ugly. And he went to the mountain. And I don't know how long they was in the mountain. And living in a cave. He went from a tent to a house. Now he's back to a cave. It'll cost you folks. It'll cost you. Sooner or later. <coughs> Abraham got up early in the morning and looked towards Sodom and saw the smoke rising. I don't know, and, and the Bible doesn't say. I always read my Bible and I got questions in my mind. I don't know why Lot knowing that city is going to be destroyed that he loves so much, why didn't he go to Abraham this time? And he'd start all over. Abraham would have given him some cattle. Abraham would have started him over since he's lost everything. I, I know Abraham that good. 
But he didn't. He wanted to go to another city. And like I say, I don't know how long he stayed in Zoar or something. It's a crazy name anyhow. But he wanted to live in the city. Now, I don't know how long he lived there or why he left. But apparently things wasn't just like uh, he thought they ought to be or whatever. And him and the two girls went to the mountain and living in a cave. And I don't know how long they was there that way. But it's not pretty what happened. The oldest daughter told the youngest daughter, said, we're never going to see a man here. <laughs> there ain't many people living in a cave. Amen. He said, I tell you, let's, what to do. I, I tell you, let, let's, let's get daddy drunk. And let's sleep with him. And have, and the Bible don't say this, but if you read it, you'll see what I'm talking about. And have sex with it. You know, you live in a city long enough where the sodomites are so prevalent. And they did. There's other sins going on there I'm sure is bad. And it rubs off on your children. These girls, the excuse they give for what they did or wanted to do doesn't make sense at all. She said to uh, the younger one, said to the, I mean, the older one said to the younger one, said, Daddy's old. He's ain't got old. And says, He's got no, no descendants, his name. He's got no male children left to carry the name on. So let's, let's get him drunk and let's sleep with him. Well, the, young and the, the younger, younger one agreed to it. And I don't know their ages, nothing like that. But apparently they was adulthood. And they did get him drunk. And the oldest one went in that night. And then the next night, they got him drunk again. And the younger one went in. And they both had boys. And the older one named her son Moab. The younger one, this is 37, 38 verses. And the younger one named her son Ammon. Have you studied your Bible enough that Moab rings a bell? One of the greatest enemies Israel ever had? Well, Ammon is the father of the Ammonites. Moab is the father of the Moabites. And they was two countries as they grew in Number that gave the Israelites a fit in war. Yet these Moabites, well, Moab, the boy, he's a man, and Ammon are Abraham's nephews. His own family trying to destroy his people. The Israelites was Abraham's people, his descendants. And here is his own blood and kin trying to destroy their kinfolks. All because of one man. that looked and saw something that he liked and went that way and got away from God so far 
that it's unreal probably what he did if we knew. Backsliding costs. I'm not a great believer in backsliding. I'm going to tell you why. You don't find it in the New Testament. Nowhere in your New Testament will it say so and so backslid. And backsliding had to do with God and the nation of Israel. If you study it, it didn't say nothing about the church. Backsliding. I don't say it doesn't happen. I did not say that. But I'm saying this. Most people that don't come to church for a year or two ain't backslidden. As far as I'm concerned. They need the new birth. They need to get born again. God will put a desire in your soul to go to church. God will put a desire in your soul to worship the Almighty. And if you don't have that, you're in bad shape. I didn't come here tonight because I had to come. I didn't come here tonight because I wanted to see how many was here. I become, because I'm a child of God, and I have a, a desire to serve Him and worship Him. I'll be back Sunday morning. God being my helper. I might be in the graveyard by then. I don't know. But God being my helper, I'll be here. Because God saved my unworthy soul and he put a desire in my soul that you need to be in church. You need to serve me. And it's, it's not a burden to come to church. Amen. I don't start praying tomorrow, Lord, you want me to go Sunday? No, I never have prayed that prayer. I come because I love God and there's a desire, a hunger to know more about him. I've spent all day today studying. Thank God she was working. It was peace and quiet. And you know, it's amazing how God works things out. But I prayed this morning and asked God to give me a good day. I had an 8 o'clock doctor's appointment and I was back to the house by nine o'clock probably. And I asked God, you know, give me some time. To, and that phone had rang but one time. And it was uh, our youngest daughter up in uh, Virginia. And I talked with her about two minutes. And it's a miracle at my house if a telemarker don't call. And that hadn't rung again all day long. And I've spent all day in this book. And I'll spend some time tomorrow. I doubt I'll spend all day tomorrow. Because you're going to be home, aren't you? Mm. I might go to Tallahassee. <laughs> My whole message lesson tonight is, please be careful. Please, just because young people fall on this a lot. Well, if so-and-so is doing it, you cannot go that road. Stockton Baptist, you cannot do something because Naylor Baptist is doing it. Or Good Hope or whatever, whoever you might. Well, they're doing it over there. That's no excuse. If it's not right, it's not right. And I'm not saying Naylor's doing anything wrong. They had six in Sunday school Sunday. I ain't throwing stones, but that's a shame. That's a shame. I know, and you, I can carry you over there and show you there's people around there, a bunch of people. Any way you want to go out of Naylor, there's people. And you just can't put a church sign out and say, y'all come. They're not going to come. You have to go. And keep on. Keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on. Does everybody come you invite? Nope. 
Does everybody get saved you witness to? Nope. But some do. Some do. As long as some do, keep going. Keep telling them. Keep praying for them, et cetera, et cetera. We'll, <laughs> we'll get away from Lot. That's the last time he's mentioned in the Bible. Other than New Testament where it talks about him being a righteous man and I don't know what else it says. It says two or three things about him. But that's it. And all it says about his wife, it says, remember Lot's wife. In the Gospel of Luke, it says that. I don't know what my children might do or might not do. And you don't know what yours going to do either. But God forbid that they'd use me as an excuse for doing it. Amen. God forbid. I mean, I'm glad my children was, never saw me do my wickedness. Never saw it. You said, would you hide from them? No, thank God they was, we didn't have any children for, I don't know, three or four years after we got married. And I was doing my wickedness. And my, when I got saved, the two oldest ones were babies. So they never, never heard me curse. They never seen me smoke a cigarette. They never seen me take a drink of liquor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I thank God for that. I do. And with the help of God, they'll never see that and they'll never hear. Now, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. But if I keep my right mind, those three things and some others, I'm not going to do. Amen. You say, well, you're mighty bold. With the help of God, I'm not going to do it. You know what gets most preachers? Women. Women. More preachers get out of the ministry because they get hooked up with a woman that's not their wife. Well, have you ever thought about that preacher? I'm human. But I heard her praying. Lord, if Carlton does do that, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. I put the fear of God in you. <laughs> I'm through. God bless you. We'll crank it up again Sunday, Lord willing.